I've never seen a suspect make an entrance like this. He has just rolled up on a custom neon green golf cart. I, first of all, I didn't say that. Chris, I've and seen a 14 year old. Chris, I've seen your show before. Turns out, I actually have a fan in Golf Cart Matt. Yo, what's good, homies? Welcome back to more Takedown with Chris Hansen. Today's creep really is entitled and thinks that he can just command Chris to turn off the cameras. He does know who he is, and he's a big fan of the show, but that didn't stop him from meeting Chris Hansen face-to-face -face and facing justice for this terrible act he was trying to commit. Make sure you watch till the very end of this one, and if we can hit 6,000 likes on this one, I will go crazy with the uploads of this series in January. I hope everybody has a great start to their year, and without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? I'm embedded with the Viper team and their latest sting. At the helm of the operation is Sergeant Mike Predmore. Chatters have been busy, as there seems to be no shortage of men looking for prey. So that's right, Chris is working with a new task force in this one, and like I said in the last video, these guys go out of their freaking way to make the craziest sounding acronyms for their operation. Today it's Viper, and they are tracking down these creeps and trying to get them to come over to this house so they can arrest them, and thankfully they found, well, actually sadly, they found a lot of people. But we're gonna meet with one of the first people that they found on this sting, and let's just see how that goes. I've never seen a suspect make an entrance like this. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. This lives so close that he has just rolled up on a custom neon green golf cart. <laughs> there is no freaking way, bro. This is the most GTA ass intro I've ever seen. Like this is seriously late stage GTA 5 online where we just have the weirdest vehicles. Bro took his golf cart over to Penny's to get it customized and he's rolling around in this neon green golf cart and he is literally so close to the decoy that he was like, you know what? You know, I'm just within the same neighborhood. I'm just gonna roll over on my golf cart. I don't know if bro has a car or what, but if he does, this is a power move still that he showed up on this thing. I'm not trying to compliment the guy, but that's a little bit swag. I gotta say, the reason he's here though, and the reason that we even know of his existence is not so swag. So let's get into that part, shall we? This is Matt, and he lives in the same neighborhood, actually just a few doors down from our sting operation. He's even so brazen with his illicit rendezvous that he's wearing his house slippers. Bro lives a few houses away. He didn't even want to walk. He's like, you know what? This is the only vehicle I have in my repertoire right now, and you're going to see me pulling up in this thing in style. I want you thinking that I'm super rich, but actually, this is probably the only thing of nice value that he owns. He actually stops and takes a few moments to chat with fellow neighbors. Anyway, I'll it. All right, let's just go Yeah, dude, I'm actually just gonna go hang out with this person I met online. Like, low key, they're like, uh, you know, about half my age. But, anyways, I'm just gonna go kick it, probably, you know, sip a few and just have a good chill time. So, I'll, I'll hit you up later if you wanna hang. Like, bro is just out here chatting with the neighbors. It's so funny to think that he's in his own neighborhood right now. But also, that's completely freaking terrifying. Like, I'm making light of this in order to kind of work through it myself mentally. But it is really scary to think that you have such monsters lurking within your own neighborhood. Hey, Matt. Gonna need to sit over that stool right over there. Dude. Dude, please. Dude, what the hell? There's only supposed to be one person here. Like, literally, you're about to block me like that? Dude, what the hell, Chris? <laughs> this guy's already, like, perturbed at the fact that Chris just popped out around that corner. I don't think he's mad about the fact that he's gonna get in trouble. He's just mad that he, you know, got interrupted, thinking he was about to get his freak on. Please, I cannot do this right now, dude. I need you to sit right over there. I know who you are, but I, I'm not here for whatever it is. Well, then you can tell me about it, but you gotta go now. Dude. I can't. I know what's going outside. They're already here. Dude, I know what's going on outside. There's gonna be cops. Like, I know your show, bro. I, I, I'm not here for that. Even though you're holding a pamphlet of, you know, chat messages that say exactly what I'm here for. And I was very, very, very detailed about what I was here for or coming over for, I should say. But I don't want to be dealing with this, dude. I can't deal with this right now. Like, does he think that because he's inconvenienced, we're just gonna call it off? Like, no, dude, you're about to be arrested regardless. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. So how do you know who I am? Because I've seen you on TV before. Well, what are you doing here, answer? Matt? You're here for no, a no, call. No, no, no. No, I did not. Roll over. Yep. Yep. So Matt tries to slither out of the door. He realizes what's going on. He knows who Chris Hansen is. Obviously, like I've been saying, if you're a younger person, you're kind of an idiot if you don't know who this man is at this point with how many memes are out there from uh, his series. But instead of him getting out of the door, the sheriffs just move in and start arresting his ass. So he is literally pinned to the ground as he's being questioned in the intro here. And I got to say, this dude's whole look is just so Florida, man. I know this is being filmed in like Michigan, I think this is, but come on, dude. This guy needs to be a character in GTA that we just destroy and some story mission. Like, I cannot believe he's rocking these shades. Something about that is just so funny to me. Yeah, Matt. Matt, how far did you travel? Sir, can you guys just take me? There's nothing else you want to say? Nope. Just my lawyer, please. 
So now he's defaulting to my lawyer will speak to you, which I don't know if this dude really has a lawyer on deck like that. Maybe he's getting into trouble that often than he does, but he is actually wisening up a little bit more than these other creeps and not giving too much information at first. Let's see if that changes with the constant pressure that Chris is gonna be giving him, but he is requesting that he just has them speak to his lawyer, which is so funny to say that. Like, tell me you're guilty without telling me you're guilty, bro. Why am I under arrest? Hang on. Why am I under arrest? Hang on. Sir, they'll tell you everything. No, why am I under arrest? Not am I being detained? So why am I under arrest? You're under arrest. Please, please not film me. I don't want to be on camera. You don't have a choice, Matt. And not only is he saying speak to my lawyer, he's now questioning why am I being arrested? Like he's somehow not understanding what's going on here. Again, Chris is holding a literal packet of information and text messages and pictures that you've been sending back and forth with this decoy that tell us exactly why you're here. So you can say all you want that you weren't doing this thing, but we have evidence that shows otherwise. So that's why you're getting arrested. And he's one of these guys that thinks he's a lawyer himself and thinks he's above the law or at least knows the law better than the police which is just hilarious to me that he thinks he can get out of this without getting in trouble and that he's just gonna have his lawyer come over and his lawyer will say some funny stuff to the cops to get him to you know not get in trouble it does not work that way I know that I don't you know the law, so you're a lawyer, man. No, absolutely not. So why do you think you why do you think you have a choice sir, about sir, being on camera? Listen, you walked into a very, place. You're very intelligent, man. I, read, I really don't want to have a conversation about it. <laughs> He's so entitled with this. He does not want to be taped yet. He is literally being filmed so up close, and I feel like every time he says, "Please don't tape me," the cameraman either zooms in or physically moves the camera in a little bit more. I love how much they use the camera crew themselves as a way to add pressure to these situations. That's a part of the TCAP lore that I just I really have appreciated since day one. You know, I always comment about the mic arm that they bring in that seems to be poking at their face almost when they're finally getting the reveal of Chris Hansen and his show and uh, this is just one of those moments we have this god tier angle where you see the dude up close in his shades it almost looks like they could use like a split diopter shot here for anybody who knows cinematography we can go like straight up Kubrick on them and have Chris in focus in the background and this guy in focus with his cool shades in the foreground man Chris hey if you're looking for a cinematographer for this next series bro hit me up please you see the vision I know you're with it anyways let's keep going well, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice, man. At least not to be taped. You have to be taped. You made the choice to walk in here, and you gave up your I, right to privacy. All, I, when I saw that, I had no idea. I said, hey, you're not like police or anything. Like, I'm, I just want to come hang out. And this dude just doesn't understand that, yes, you made the choice to come into this private residence to do something terrible that's going to get you landed in jail. We have the right to film you all that we want, especially while you're being arrested. Again, this is like those people on cops that act entitled like they can just tell the cameras to turn off. It doesn't work that way. Chris, I've seen your show before. Turns out, I actually have a fan in Golf Cart Matt. While he's a fan, he's not too happy about being on this episode of Takedown. By the way, nothing. I have, I, I'm not here for what you think, believe it or not. I know what Bro, I'm literally just here to chill. Whether or not you believe me, I'm a big fan of your show, but I need you to believe me on that. I wasn't going to do anything. Also, don't check that cooler over there. Don't check what I brought in it. Or, you know, don't check my pocket for balloons or anything. But that is not what I came over here for, bro. I'm telling you. I have about an hour left, I'm about to go to sleep, and I have to work in the morning, and that's it. Where do you work, man? I can't say that, sir. I'm gonna find out. Please don't, because then I'll get fired. But only if I lose that, I lose everything I have. I don't have anything, sir. Like, and now dude's going down his sob story. Like, dude, I just have my job. I gotta take care of my mom. Like, I literally have so much in my life that I need right now. I have nothing, and you're gonna take it all away as a result of this. Like, dude, you made that choice when you decided to continue with this chat and decided to show up to this house. You are the one that is the cause of your own demise. Don't get it twisted here. This is not Chris's fault. Chris is just the one catching you in the act. But you are the one getting yourself in trouble like a complete dumbass and none of us feel bad for you i'm alone in my life i have nothing like literally everybody in my life is dead my mom's the only one living i take care of her the best i can because of matt's actions his mom and the dog will have to fend for themselves until he posts bail what a fucking savage dude chris just comes over with the voiceover like well it looks like his mommy and his dog are gonna have to fend for themselves while he rots away in a jail cell like, geez, dude, this guy's giving you his life story. He's giving you the sob story of a lifetime right now, and he just could not care less. That shows you how seasoned this man is, because a lot of us would get struck with this empathy cord. Even I do in my voiceover sometimes, and I find myself slipping. Like, why the f*** am I feeling bad for this person right now? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, there's going to be that human angle of it where you almost feel bad for these guys when they tell you their situations, but we shouldn't. This dude's a complete monster, and he deserves what he's getting. Well, first of all, I don't know what's going on right now, dude. I'm really freaked out. I don't know what's going on right now, dude. Well, I can tell you what's going on. You had a charge conversation with somebody who said they're legal website absolutely. yeah but they say they're I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Even though the decoy said it like multiple times and, you know, I made sure that I was sneaky when I came over here, I didn't know that that was their age, bro. Like, this dude just hitting all the classic lies. I love it. And even Chris is like, dude, I've been doing this show for a long time. You've been a fan of me. You know how I do all these series. I've heard it all. And this is one of the most common lies. You got to come with something more creative than that, please. 
Oh, Matt. Do you know how many times I've heard that? Absolutely. What do you think of those shows? I think that is, I think that you're doing a great job. You're actually, I've seen you on a lot of other podcasts, too. You do a great job. That's why I'm wondering what is going on right now. What is going- <laughs> and this dude, he actually is a full on fan. He's been watching the podcast appearances that Chris has done. Like, that is crazy. Oh, that's got to add just some extra layers to the demise of this guy and like the stress and the anxiety that he's feeling right now. And I really do just, I love thinking about how stressed these dudes are. It gives me life, it gives me power. And I'm sure you all feel the same way. You walked in here and you gave up your right to privacy when you came no, into no, this I home. Walk, I, I walked into a house from a legal app where people meet, that's it. And he keeps saying he was using a legal app, which is the funniest thing. Like if you're moving weight on Snapchat and you know, the SWAT team comes in to bust down your door to arrest you, just because you're using the app that's legally, you know, able to be on the app store doesn't mean that you weren't committing some terrible act on there or whatever it might be. You know what I mean? Like that's just such a stupid line of logic from this guy and shows how moronic he is. I didn't say that. You didn't say anything about, I want that ass. From who? From you. Where from me? From your fingers, dumbass. You typed it. <laughs> like, what more does he want? He's getting so granular with these questions for no reason other than to waste our time. Why did you show up here in the first place, man? I told you. I just wanted to come by and hang out. And I thought the person was not that. I thought it was a joke. I thought they were joking. Usually when I meet up with people like this, you know, they're not actually the age they said. So I always think it's just some sort of inside joke on apps like this, man. You got to understand. I was just looking to chill. This is a legal app where I talk to grown adults. I thought they were joking because it's, uh, they always say that they're and then it's a 25 to 30 year old man, but I've never said, hey, yo, let's do that. No, no. Then why I'm did not. you say it today, man? And again, like one of our previous episodes, a couple episodes ago, this dude self snitches and says, they always say that they're, you know, that age. Like, what do you mean they always say that? This has been a multiple, you know, instances of you dealing with people like this, which we always believe. All these guys will say it's their first time, but we know that's a lie. And this dude totally just tattled on himself there. I love that. I thought it was just because I could have sworn they said laughing out loud, it's funny, ha ha ha, I'm like, all right, well, I'm just coming by to hang out. I probably could have talked with Matt for another hour, but there's another possibly on the way so we have to get Matt out of the house through the back door and sadly this dude's rambling on about how he was using this quote legal app and using the same excuses and they eventually have to completely shuffle him out of the house as another creep is about to show up again it always weirds me out when I see how often and frequent these investigations are I know they're just working there for a day but they catch like maybe 10 15 dudes in a day which is insane to me so anyways the sheriff just says he's gonna get questioned and taken down at the courthouse and I'm sure they're gonna charge him with the same stuff they charge these other guys but I want to know what you all thought of this one down in the comments below absolutely legendary character within the chris hansen lore bro pulled up on a neon golf cart and some cool ass shades and still took the biggest l we've ever seen like that was absolutely magnificent i hope this sends you off into the new year with some good vibes as always thank you so much for making it to the end of the video if you did drop a like if you haven't already and subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss an upload and comment grim squad for life if you made it to the end anyways i'll catch you guys in the next video and until next time peace out